Okay, folks, it's uh, been a couple of weeks since I was talking to you, but I've got something today I think is really, really important, and I want to call you to pray with me for Andrew Scheer and the Conservative Party, particularly the Conservative Party leadership. And, uh, you know, I, um, I understand, I believe that Andrew Scheer is a Christian. Uh, man, at least Catholic, I, I know that much. Uh, and um, uh, somebody could fill me in some more information about that. I, I don't know much more about it, but so many people that have come together and formed the Conservative Party and were involved with the Conservative Party, a Christian. Uh, I was, you know, a member for years. And, and then in the last number of years, what's happened is something that, that troubles me so much. And, and what, I, what I started to see was, was fear. Uh, it was like I, I'd see Andrew Scheer making decisions or making statements or responding, and it was like intimidation and fear was there. And now even in the campaigning that started, what, what, what we seem to be seeing here is towing the line of political correctness. And I listened to Maxine Bernier, who, who left the, the party, and, and he said, you know, it, it's like polling and trying to find out what people think before the conservatives made their opinion or statements or the positions, and he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't stay there anymore. So all of that, um, I was praying about that the other day. Like, what God's going on? All of a sudden, the Lord brought me a revelation about it, something that I have contended with in my own life and ministry uh, in years gone by, and that is the spirit of fear and the spirit of Jezebel. And, and they will operate against uh, people of God, prophets of God, and churches, it will also operate in social levels and it operates in governments. This thing is a principality and power that wants to dominate nations. It's, it's dominating the nation and it operates. The spirit of Jezebel is the power behind political correctness because it operates by intimidation and fear and a lot of other characteristics um, uh, that are around it. And uh, so I, I want in a minute just to pray for Andrew Shear. But let me explain about the, the spirit of Jezebel. You might say, what, what's the spirit of Jezebel? Well, you won't find that term exactly in the Bible, but uh, many people over the years have said, um, you know, the, the qualities of Queen Jezebel, King Ahab, in, in the, the, you know, the book of Kings and Chronicles, uh, who he was the most wicked king in Israel. Uh, the things you see happen there are the kinds of things you see happen with his spirit. And then the same is Jezebel's mentioned again in the book of Revelations. Now let me explain a little bit. Jezebel uh, was a uh, princess of Sidon, the Sidonians, and uh, it, you know arranged marriage or convenient marriage or whatever alignment. Uh, Ahab married her. She probably was a priestess of of the Asherah and Baal, and through with in Ahab brought Baal and Asherah worship these horrid, filthy things into Israel and, and everywhere these idols were set up. Uh, Baal, called Dagon, other places, uh, was worshipped by the sacrifice of little babies. Does it sound like familiar to you? What's the big push with all this stuff about abortion? There you go. Uh, uh, Asherah was worshipped with all kinds of perverse sexual practices. Um, everything. And I won't go into it or elaborate it, but that's how that worship was going on. You see, there's a religious fervor and intensity that's driving these agendas. You, you've known that, right? So anyway, what did Jezebel do? She instituted that. She, she uh, really dominated Ahab, put in all the stuff she wanted. Um, she killed the prophets of God, brought in the prophets of Baal and fed them at her own table and provided everything that they wanted. They were broadcasting their garbage all over the nation, you know. Uh, she controlled people and agendas by uh, lying and false accusation when, when Ahab wanted a piece of land and the man wouldn't get, sell it to him because it was a family property. She arranged for that man to get killed by, by people because all these false accusations were raised up against him. You see, that's, that's, that's Jezebel. That's what it's like. And it is an incredible, intimidating uh, powerful thing. Now God raised up two people to deal with it. Uh, Elijah the prophet was there and remember Elijah had the confrontation with the prophets of Baal. He reestablished the altar of God 
challenged them to a duel, and uh, they couldn't call down fire for he heaven, but he did in front of all the people, and then the prophets of Baal were rounded up and all killed. When Jezebel said, I'll get you, he fled out of fear. Like, what is the, this great prophet of God, Elijah, full of fear of Jezebel? Well, the, the arena, see, he was in was one of the arenas where it was the religious arena, the prophet arena. He had victory, and then there comes the arena of uh, uh, politics as queen and king, Ahab and Jezebel. Um, he fled. There's different arenas where this spirit operates all over the place. And so uh, what did God do? God told him, uh, Elijah, go and anoint Elisha as a prophet to come. And Jehu, Jehu went uh, feverishly, begin to execute the command of God, take down the kingdom, kill all the sons of Ahab, because Ahab had already died. And, and uh, also, you know, got rid of Jezebel too. Interestingly, gee, Jezebel had eunuchs. Eunuchs means like these men, servants that are castrated. Another feature of Jezebel removes the potency of the men. The men are no longer men, you know, and takes away uh, your power. That's what it's about, your, your, your virility. You see that going on in the culture anywhere? All of this, you know, is going on. It was those eunuchs who cast her out of the window of the palace and killed her. It's a, a total reversal happened. So um, in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, Jesus is talking to one of the churches in, in the book of Revelation and says, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. So there's a Jezebel there in the New Testament who calls herself a prophetess. In other words, she thinks she's speaking for God and is teaching and seducing my, my servants, my people, to commit immorality. There it is again, the same stuff, the false prophecy, the immorality. And what's the political correct agenda today? You know, abortion, all the sexual stuff that's going on. Isn't that the big one? It's, it's the big one. Those two big ones. That is the agenda. It's driven by this same thing, which people call uh, a spirit of Jezebel. It comes along and intimidates and puts fear into people. Now, I remember when I was a pastor, uh, I dealt with it a couple times as a particular person was trying to up, rise up and control things in one of the churches. I've dealt with it in a couple places. And, and uh, oh man, it rankled me because I felt a couple things happening. One was I, I felt intimidated. I felt fearful of what might happen and so this person's trying to get in control and manipulating the things the way she wanted things to be get into the position of control to do it and i'm praying about it because i am so disturbed inside i, I i'm not saying or doing the things i feel like i'm supposed to be doing because i'm intimidated and the lord reveals to me this thing about jezebel and all of it and that's when i was able to rise up deal with stuff with authority in my church the person's gone and cleanse out the power of that spirit, and boy, it did just it just made a mess for a bit, and and uh, it was gone. You know, the uh, uh, um, Paul the apostle said to Timothy, "God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind or self control." Uh, the word fear is is really the word uh, timidity, and timidity is the root word where you get intimidation. Okay. So there you go. That's how that thing operates. Now, I'll get back to Andrew Scheer, the leaders of the Conservative Party. A couple of days ago, God just opened my eyes because what I'd been perceiving and upset about, and, and, and it was just bothering me all the time for the last year or two. So I asked, Lord, what is going on? Because they came out with some more political correct positions. And, and, I'm, and all of a sudden, my eyes are open. It's the spirit of Jezebel. It's that fear and timidity. That's what's happening. They want to do polls to find out what they should say. They want to, you know, just tread lightly in fear of the press. Who are the false prophets today? Who are the prophets of Baal today? It's the media. You got real prophets. You got prophets in the church and stuff, but the false prophets are the media broadcasting out what to do and what to think to all the people in the nation, controlling, trying to control the agenda. And here's Google boasting recently how it's going to adjust and, you know, see, they get them on camera secretly, but the, the you know, the people are boasting how they can adjust the algorithms to, to actually 
change the election and all this kind of stuff, how people will vote, how they will think, set the agenda. All this is going on here. Spirit of Jezebel, false prophets right there, and intimidation control that's happening. Now, you know what? This ended when God raised up the Elijahs and the uh, uh, Jehu, dealing with the political realm, Jehu, dealing with the social and the spiritual religious realm, Elijah, uh, uh, you know, God did it. But we need to pray for Andrew Shear. I'm praying right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Will you join me? Lord, I am praying that the power of the spirit of fear and timidity and the, the Jezebel influence be broken from the conservative party and broken from Andrew Shear in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This thing stops operating and Heavenly Father, that they will begin to speak out of their convictions, not out of trying to figure out what people th they think might be safe to say or what the media won't attack them on or, or whatever, Father. We pray that the, uh, the, 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 the prophets, the false prophets in the media come down, that be removed from our media in the name of Jesus that we remove from the media in the name of Jesus, the media turn around. I had that prophetic word there a few weeks ago, remember? That, God, that there'll be about face in the media. When this spirit gets off the media, there'll be about face. Father, we pray for that spirit of Bezabel to be bound, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father in heaven, you would raise up a Jehu who will move into government places and start to deal with stuff politically, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Man. I, I just feel the presence and anointing of God when I'm telling you this. Please pray like that. Study it some more because uh, this, this is such a key. I, I didn't see it before. Now I see it pretty clear. There we go. And uh, yeah, God bless you. Have a great Canada Day. Do you like my hat? <laughs> Keep praying. Don't give up. Jesus is Lord and he's on the throne.